Hi, I'm Rob from Projector Central and today we're going to show you how to build an ultra short throw ambient light rejecting screen and set up a UST projector. Okay, so we've got Epson's new LS500 projector and 100 inch companion screen on hand for today's demo. But the screen construction is very similar to other popular UST screens. And the process for maneuvering any UST projector into position, that's pretty much the same. Now before we get going, I should point out that I have experience building screens and working with UST projectors, so I felt very comfortable tackling this job by myself. But it is highly recommended for you to have a helper on hand for building and especially hanging the screen. Also, while this isn't a complicated project for a weekend do-it-yourselfer, if you feel like it's beyond your capabilities, you can always buy from a dealer who can do the installation for you. Okay, so let's get started. First, you'll want to put out your parts, including the frame and trim pieces, the springs, the mounting hardware, and screws. After that, lay out the provided plastic sheet to protect the frame and trim pieces. As far as extra tools, you want a number two Phillips screwdriver for assembling the frame, a drill and screw gun for mounting the wall brackets, an electronic or magnetic stud finder, and a bubble level and straight edge. Also, grab a pencil for marking the wall. The next step is building the rectangular frame, which is a simple matter of slipping the L brackets into the slots in the four frame pieces. They join solidly with four screws on each corner. Now, when the frame is assembled, put it on the side. Later on, we'll attach the screen material on the black border trim. But before that, it's actually a good idea to use the empty frame for positioning and installing the wall mount brackets. Now, you don't have to do it this way, but the frame is much lighter than the finished screen, and it's easier to level on the wall before the material goes in. Also, doing it this way means less handling of the finished screen, and it just reduces your chances of doing any damage to the ALR screen surface. At this point, set up the projector on its furniture and call up a full frame grid or other setup pattern from the menu. Epson's installation guide setup screen is found under the settings submenu. Adjust the distance of the projector from the wall to provide the correct image width to fill the screen surface. The image width for a 100 inch 16 by 9 diagonal screen is 87 inches or 105 inches wide for a 120 inch screen. Epson supplies a cardboard jig that's helpful for situating the projector the correct distance from the wall, but it's designed to be used with the fully constructed screen with its trim pieces already in place. It'll get you in the ballpark here, but you'll still want to measure the image width to make sure it's correct. I should also mention that the throw ratio on Epson's lens is longer than some other UST projectors, so it does get positioned a little further off the wall. For a 100 inch screen, the back of the projector sits 17 inches away. This is also a good time to make sure the surface of your furniture is level. You'll be able to use the adjustable feet on the projector later to fine tune its position. But starting out with a level mounting surface, both left to right and front to back, makes for an easier installation. I ended up putting some plastic shims under the footing of our AV cabinet to get it straight. If you do level the furniture, recheck the image width again before the next step. Now, once you feel like the furniture and projector are about where they need to be, Square off the image as best you can by twisting the projector left and right and using the adjustable feet at the front of the projector. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect at this point, but get it as close as you can. Then we're going to mark the wall with a pencil at the top of the image right at the center point. You're going to use this mark to draw a horizontal line that represents the top of the final projected image. Now I noticed that the LS500's big lens imparts a very slight bow at the top middle of the image, so I marked about a quarter inch below that at a point more or less even with the height of the corners. At this point you can remove the projector to keep it out of harm's way and use your mark at the top of the image and a laser level or bubble level and straight edge to draw a perfectly level line across. You don't need to draw the full width of the screen, but you should go far enough off the center point that you'll cross at least a couple of wall studs on both sides. Next, find your mounting studs with magnetic or electronic stud finder and mark their location along the horizontal line you've drawn. If for some reason you can't use the studs for mounting, the 24 pound screen is light enough to be supported by drywall anchors. You'll have to purchase those at your local hardware store. They don't come with the projector. Just be sure before you drill into a wall cavity that there's no plumbing or electric back there. All right, once the stud locations are marked, you're ready to mount the brackets. Now the location of the screw holes in the mounting bracket aren't exactly at the top of the image, so you'll have to account for the offset. For the Epson screen, the brackets slip into a wide channel on the frame, and the distance to the top of the frame piece 
from the screw location is three and one quarter inches. So you'll want to measure down that distance from the horizontal line representing the top of the image and mark your screw holes there. The brackets for the Epson screen have a keyhole and an oval slot for the screws, which allow for some small degree of height adjustment. Once the brackets are up, hang the empty frame and check that it's level. If it's off by a little bit, you can play with the bracket positions to get it just right. With the screen positioning squared away and the mounting brackets in place, it's time to finish the screen construction. The screen material comes rolled with a protective layer of plastic. Unroll and lay out the screen material with the back side up and carefully place the finished frame assembly on top. Now here's the tricky part. You need to carefully position the frame so that you get as close to a perfectly even border of screen on each of the four sides. The corners are cut so they'll wrap neatly around the frame at the joints. But if you get too much material on one side and not enough on the opposite side, you could end up with a tiny piece of screen corner that's not covered when you're done. If you do, the only way to fix it is to deconstruct the screen, including all those springs, and start over. Once you get the frame and material properly situated, start attaching the springs with the provided spring pullers one corner at a time, moving to the opposite corner to maintain even tension all around while you get the screen situated on the frame. Be careful you don't move the frame in the process and mess up your nice even borders. Having a helper working the opposite side of the screen at the same time definitely helps here. Once those initial corner springs are done and you're satisfied you have the material wrapped evenly around the frame, you can work your way around the screen and apply the rest of the tension springs. Now, with the springs in place, it's a simple matter to attach the black trim pieces. They slip right over the frame and material. At each corner, apply one side, situate the plastic corner cap, apply the second side, and hold it all together nice and tight while you tighten the screws. To finish off the screen, you'll apply two more springs to the middle of the long trim pieces on the top and bottom of the screen to help hold them tight to the frame. It's most important for the bottom piece to ensure that it won't sag. When that's done, insert the two supplied thumb screws to the holes in the bottom frame piece. These thumb screws can be adjusted to hold the bottom of the screen out from the wall so it hangs parallel. When you're done, get a helper to gently lift the screen over the brackets and lower it down. Make sure you hang the screen with the labeled bottom properly oriented. Use the supplied cloth gloves and avoid directly touching the screen surface. The last step here is getting the projector set up and aligned. Epson provides both geometric keystone correction, as most USD projectors do, and border adjustments to block out any minor overspill from bowing. But it's best to do this using only the physical movement of the projector if you can. Hopefully, you're starting out with a level projector surface and a level screen, so it's first a matter of repositioning the projector at the right distance for the proper image size. Once that's done, you can twist the projector left and right to zero in on the height of the left and right top corners. Finally, use the two adjustments at the front of the projector to eliminate any remaining keystone and make the left and right edges of the image parallel to the screen border. A few rounds of this should hone the image in very nicely. As you can see, building and mounting a UST ALR screen and getting the projector situated can take a little time, but the result is a huge and engaging image that holds up well to bright light and will change the way you watch TV every day. Thanks for watching this video, and if you thought it was helpful, be sure to click that subscribe button and leave your comments below. We'll see you back here soon.